Awesome, well, continuing through to our PCM here, uh, PCM just gonna be your central touchscreen in the vehicle. We're going to go ahead with the setup so you can see what that looks like. So essentially this is going to create us our profile that we're going to be driving within the vehicle. It's going to remember everything from your seating kind of driving position to your climate control settings and your vehicle, some of the system settings. Um, and then it's also going to be linking all of your online functionality from your My Porsche account into the vehicle as well. So it is quite important that you're using it. Um, starting here, we're going to select whatever language we want to be using. I'm going to hit next. We're going to hit next here. This is just telling us that our embedded SIM card in the vehicle has connected to the internet. Um, if you are wanting to search for a phone and connect it to Bluetooth right off the bat, you can go ahead, open up the settings and go to the Bluetooth settings on your mobile device and hit search for new device. But for now, we're just going to skip that. Coming here, this is going to be the Porsche ID login. So essentially what are you getting this from is your initial My Porsche account setup that you would have done. Um, if you haven't been done, make sure that it is done for when you come and pick up your vehicle. Um, like I said, a lot of your kind of main user settings, all the online services, everything's going to be linked to this now. Um, so you are definitely going to want to set it up. And then on top of that, a lot of stuff, even let's say online software updates for the car that it gets pushed through to the vehicle while you're at home for either navigation uses or even stuff like bug fixes. Um, you do need to link it up for any of that to work. Um, so for ours, I'm going to just enter our ID in here. And then when you're entering your password, make sure that it is the correct, uh, correct capital and lowercase letters. If not, it's not going to work. And then you're going to hit login and it's going to link your my porsche account to your vehicle right here all right once we get past the login screen now we're going to have a few different login options if you are wanting to enter your credentials each time to log in um, you can keep it with login with security code and uh, when you set up that my porsche account you would have set up a four digit code and you'd have to punch that each time you wanted to access your driver profile um, however we're going to select login without security code I'm going to type in my security code right here. And once that goes through, I'm going to be able to select automatic login. And then we're not going to have to worry about typing in all our uh, credentials each time we hop in the car. It's going to ask you whether or not you want to deactivate private mode. Make sure that you do. That's what's going to allow the vehicle to uh, access any of the remote services. What those are, that's essentially the functionality from the app on your phone. So if you're wanting to uh, kind of pre-climatize the vehicle lock, unlock the car, anything like that. Um, this needs to be deactivated and it's also going to allow all of your connect services to link to the car correctly. And then we're going to hit next after we deactivate it. And then it's going to ask us if we want to set up the voice control. Um, we're going to click online voice recognition. That's allowing the SIM card to work while we're using the voice control. Like I said, um, if the car can't recognize like a, let's say a, a navigation instruction or anything like that, um, then it can go and pull from Google for more data and uh, and hopefully recognize exactly what you're searching for. It works very much like Siri. And below that is activate by saying, hey, Porsche. Um, if you check that, you could say, hey, Porsche in the vehicle, and it's going to bring up the voice control, just like Siri would on your phone. And then we've reached the end of the setup assistant. We're just going to hit finish. And it's going to bring us to our home screen, which you can see right here. On the top right of the screen, you're going to be able to see the driver profile that we logged into. So this is our Porsche Central Calgary one. So like I said, important that you get this set up because it's going to remember all of your memory settings in the vehicle. Um, if you do have a second driver that's going to be taking the vehicle, they can either drive on this guest profile. They could use the one, two or three on the door just to remember the drive or the, the seating position. Or if you log into the My Porsche account on your desktop, you can scroll down in the overview and create a secondary profile. And then from there, you'd be able to hit accounts and you could add another secondary user here so they'd have their own distinct profile. Continuing through the touchscreen, we're going to have a variety of different menus. So the far left menu right here, you'll notice replicates our four kind of main categories along the top. So starting with the vehicle settings, we're going to dive into these. Um, so essentially, this is going to be a replication of the mode selector just below the steering wheel that we went over previously. You're going to see the different driving modes here, for example. And just so you can see, let's say we put the car into Sport Plus mode. Um, all of your other options, so your chassis or your PASM right here is going to mirror the Sport Plus mode. So 
your suspension stiffened up to the firmest position and the car's gone down into the lowest position. So chassis height's referring to your air suspension. Below that, you're going to have that recuperation feature that we talked about. Um, when you are in Sport Plus mode, it is going to be getting turned on. Um, but let's say we want to come in here and turn it to auto wear off. Um, of course, we can do that as well. Everything does remain independent from each other. Um, and then the very last one, which we haven't talked about yet, is going to be your electric sport sound. Essentially, when that is active, which it is right now, the car is going to broadcast a kind of makes the car sound like a, a spaceship, but it's going to broadcast some some noise throughout the vehicle through the speakers. Essentially, where they come by that noise, they record the sound of the electric motor. They're going to scrub out all the high frequency sound that you can't really hear anyways and sounds weird. And then they're going to broadcast that noise through the speaker. The harder you're accelerating, the louder the noise is. Kind of replicates a combustion engine sound in that regard. And it just gives you a little bit more emotion in the vehicle, makes it a little bit more exciting. Um, the option when you're just talking about it does sound a little bit cheesy, but give it a try. Personally, I'm a big fan of it. It makes the car sound really, really cool. Coming over from our different drive modes, we're going to have our different assistance systems. So let's pop into this. Um, depending on options, this menu can vary slightly, but to start, our basic assist right here is going to be talking about essentially the automatic braking in the vehicle. So let's say we're driving along and someone uh, in front of you has to slam on the brakes for whatever reason, um, and your car thinks you're going to collide with them. The car's going to give you a collision warning. If you don't respond to that, you're going to get a physical one. So the car taps the brakes so you can actually feel it. And if you still don't respond to that and don't take action, then the car will try and halt the car, um, protect you from hitting whatever's in front of you there. Um, just keep in mind, it will only work on other moving objects. Coming down, you're going to have your park assist. Um, that essentially, whenever you go into reverse, it is going to be bringing up your parking sensors and your rear backup camera anyhow. And um, if you do go into it, you can bring up the surround view. So the one that where you have cameras all the way around your vehicle um, gives you that 360 view. Um, and then on the left here, you can kind of change up uh, what your front facing camera is going to look like. Um, other thing I'll mention with your park assist, if you are approaching a, a, let's say a parking spot from the front and you're pulling in forwards, once you come close enough to let's say another car or a parking cone, you name what it is, um, when it triggers your sensors, then it's going to pull up your surround view anyhow. Um, so you don't necessarily have to come into here to access your park assist. Below that, you're going to have your lane keep assist. So that's essentially keeping your vehicle centered between the lines. So if you just start drifting out of your lane, your car is going to pull yourself back into it. Um, keep in mind, it's only an assistance system, so it's not meant for kind of hand-free driving. Um, if you do take off your hands from the steering wheel, the car will know and it, uh, it'll let you know before it does it, but it will disable the function, um, force you to take control of the vehicle again. Um, other noteworthy things is that this function will only work if you're driving above 60 kilometers an hour. Coming to your lane change assist, this is going to be your blind spot warning. So if someone's in your blind spot while well, you're signaling to get over, your uh, blind spot warning on your mirrors is going to light up and indicate that someone is in your path. When you were assist, let's say a sofa dropped out of the truck in front of you and is sitting on the road and you're going to collide with it. The maneuvering assist will recon recognize those objects and it will initiate the maneuver to get you out of the way, but you as the driver are responsible for, uh, for completing it. The rear cross traffic alert. Um, let's say you're backing up and someone's coming across your blind spot or, or where you can't see them while you're backing up. That's just going to beep and alert you that they're in that area. And the last one, the egress warner, let's say you're parallel parked on the street and you're about to hop out and traffic's coming by. That's just going to uh, beep at you and indicate on your instrument cluster that uh, traffic is coming out and just to wait for a second before you hop out of the car. Um, also, I'll mention while we're going through these assistance systems or let's say the driver systems right here. On the bottom right of the screen, you're going to have your three little dots right here. If you click this, this is always going to act as a shortcut into the relevant settings. So we are in the vehicle menu before. So let's say uh, we need to go adjust some settings. It's going to take us directly into our vehicle settings right here. It's kind of a quicker way to access your settings and going through the entire touchscreen. Coming along to trip at the top, this is just going to be your basic trip info on the car. Um, so you can do like a personalized trip if you're scrolling through trip since we first hopped in the car and it's just going to show you consumption how efficient you've been driving average speed all of those statistics um, if you want to reset any of these once again three little dots in the bottom there that's going to allow you to reset it 
So the last sub menu in our vehicle menu is going to be our comfort settings. And in this menu, we're going to have a variety of different things. So starting from the top, we're going to have our ambient lighting. A um, little difficult to see now just because it's daylight out, but uh, if you play around and adjust this at night, it looks quite good. Um, so essentially, Starting from here, we're going to have the ability to turn on and off the ambient lighting. Below that, we're going to have color choice. Um, so as you can see here, variety of different colors we can select from depending on what's your favorite. If we go down right to the bottom, we're going to have dynamic lighting. And essentially what the vehicle is going to be doing with that is that it's going to be matching the ambient lighting colors to the album art, depending what music you're listening to. Clicking off of here, um, really we're just going to have some brightness choice. So overall brightness, that's going to be the overall brightness inside the entire vehicle. And then if you do want to customize it a little bit further and kind of choose your own brightnesses, you're going to be able to go into the door lighting, cup holders, under consoles, footwells, and uh, decide what that brightness level is going to be from there. Clicking outside of ambient lighting, we're going to be going to the driver's seat and passenger seat settings. Essentially, what this is, is going to be either a heat uh, or seat heating balance or ventilation balance. And what I mean by that, let's say you prefer a warmer back than seat. You can go and kind of adjust the bias on that and decide which, uh, which side you want warmer. And the same is going to be going for the seat ventilation balance, whether or not you want a colder uh, butt versus back sort of thing. And then of course, you're gonna have the same abilities to do that on the passenger seat. And then coming down, you're gonna have your comfort entry. This is quite the handy function. So essentially, and it is yeah, quite important, especially if you have two uh, drivers that are sized quite differently. Um, while that's on, when you power off the vehicle, your seat's gonna slide back on the rails and your steering wheel's gonna move up as long as it has room to go up. And it just makes it easier to hop in and out of your seat um, rather than being cramped whenever you hopped in the car at first. Um, the very bottom one is going to be to adjust the passenger seat and how that works, I would just select this. And then while this menu is up here, I'm just going to use my driver's seat controls to adjust the passenger seat. And uh, whenever I'm done, I can just say stop seat adjustment and uh, the passenger seat will uh, be adjusted from there.